we were not uh, given any consent. We were not explained anything about these side effects. Everything that we were told about it was false. No one knew that this drug was just a trial and no one knew that it wasn't even on the market and it hadn't even been, you know, the guinea pigs. They were guinea pigs, lab rats. The Airborne Regiment itself basically had to take on or had to accept the opprobrium of the entire nation. We became basically the, the black sheep of the entire Canadian military and Canadian society as a whole. It's been over 24 years since the Somalia affair made headlines across the country. Today considered one of the darkest chapters in Canadian military history, the senseless murder of Shadena Rome has left more questions than answers. He said uh, a prisoner broke into our compound and we were ordered, we were told to make an example of him. We roughed him up really good. And he said, but two hours later, they come and got me and told me my prisoner died. Hardly a day goes by that Marge Machi doesn't think about the killing of Shadena Rome. As the wife of one of the two soldiers who were charged with his murder, her family has suffered the public shame and stigma of what happened that day for the past two decades. I am not condoning that this young man died. No one is. But I know, now and then, had it not been for mefloquine, this would have never happened, ever. The decision to use mefloquine in the Somalia mission has been highly criticized. At the time, the anti-malarial drug was still experimental and hadn't been approved for use in Canada. Canadian soldiers were essentially used as guinea pigs, part of a poorly monitored drug trial, which contravened numerous health regulations. I knew nothing of the drug. I didn't know they were ta he was taking it until just before he left. Um, it, it was crazy because it caused him to change so quickly. It was like that, and he was a different man. In the weeks that followed the deployment, Machi says her husband's mental state slowly deteriorated. When he eventually returned home on leave, he was a changed man, consumed by paranoia, anger, and hallucinations. I woke up in the middle of the night to him choking the life out of me. I almost didn't make it. I know I was going out. And he, he come to his senses. He's looking me in the eyes and he come to his senses and he said, he swore, he said, holy, I'm in Canada. Oh my God, what am I doing? And he jumped and he wouldn't lay down all night after that. He just paced the holes in the floor apologizing to me and well, I was just shocked, I mean. I'm not, I, I, he just never did things like that, right? But it wasn't only Clayton Matchy that was having adverse reactions to the mefloquine. Soldiers from across the regiment even gave nicknames to the days of the week they would be supplied with the drug. For Matchy's company, it was Psycho Tuesday. Several of us went to the medics uh, on the ground in Somalia and had complained of issues temporally associated from the use of the drug. And yet we were told either drink more water, try to get more sleep, things of that nature. Uh, we didn't have a choice to go to a different drug and our concerns about the drug were basically uh, dismissed in that no real action was taken. John Dow is one of the few soldiers that actually witnessed the beating of Shadena Roan. He was there on the night of March 16, 1993 when the 16-year-old Somali was captured sneaking onto the compound 
and has no doubt that methylquin played a role in what happened next. He hits Shadane on the torso and then again on the leg. Whack, whack. There's no reason for it. I don't understand why, why he's doing it. I look confused. And then he continues to start working his way uh, to the on the floor of the bunker right in front of Shadane, working his way backwards and then smacking his baton against the walls and begins to screaming uh, or angrily, fucking camel spiders, camel spiders, fucking camel spiders. To this day, Dow is convinced that Clayton Matchy was hallucinating at the time of the incident. It wasn't until later that he realized the full impact of what took place. Shadane was out, uh, hauled out of the bunker and he was on the ground and there was a couple of guys around him and they were trying to revive him uh, with water, but he was not, he was unresponsive. Uh, and then they said, go get the doctor. And I looked down and now I know he, he was dead. Clayton Matchy and Kyle Brown were both arrested and later charged with the torture and murder of Shadena Roan. While back home in Canada, Marge Matchy received news that would change her life forever. The words were coming out, but they weren't sinking in. Like uh, it was so hard to understand. You, all I heard was that he. I mean, all I absorbed at first was that he wasn't going to make it. You know, they said. Uh, we're sorry to inform you, but your husband has been found, is, uh, was found hanging in a cell. Machi survived the apparent suicide attempt, but suffered permanent brain damage as a result. He would never be able to explain to his family about the events leading up to the death of Shadena Roan, or what role Methloquin may have played on his state of mind. It's a question that veterans like Dave Bona have no problem answering. Would this incident have happened if methloquin was not issued? It wouldn't have happened. I know for a fact it would not have happened. I look at my own, my own experience with the drug and it's like, pff, I was a glue bag on the drug. I was not thinking clearly. I could not function. I was, I was explosively angry easily uh, prone to violence. Bona also served with the Canadian Airborne Regiment in Somalia. Hello, Merge. Come in. Hi, how are you? Good. It's cold out. And like Clayton Matchy, he was also ordered to take methloquin before his deployment. In my mind, it, it was very clearly an, Ill, an illegal drug trial. You know, they, you're not allowed to test drugs on soldiers in an operational theater. For Bona, the side effects were immediate and intense. During the day, he would suffer bouts of confusion, paranoia, and extreme anger. While at night, he would have disturbing dreams that his fellow soldiers began to call methylomeres. The dreams were uh, quite violent, uh, killing, um, killing my family and my section members, guys in my section and platoon, that it was, yeah, it just got to the point I did, didn't sleep the night we took the pills. Nightmares and hallucinations that steadily got worse as the mission went on. I woke up walking across our compound, had my rifle in my hands, I was barefoot, just with a pair of shorts on, so shorts and a rifle, and you know, when I woke up and I came, like basically became conscious, aware what where I was and what I was doing, like the only like all I remember is like I was going to shoot someone. That was the thought that was in my mind. It was years before Bona would find out what was actually causing his symptoms, following the murder of Shadena Rome. The once proud soldiers of Canada's Airborne Regiment were disgraced in the eyes of the country. The mission itself was considered an unmitigated disaster and would eventually be abandoned completely. But for Marge Matchy, it was only the beginning. As more and more soldiers returned home with unexplained disorders, exposing the truth of what happened in Somalia became a lifelong battle.
they were not in control. They were impaired. They were driven into madness, both of them. You, you know, they depend on their superiors to have their well-being in mind, to make sure these things don't happen to them so they can perform their duties. Instead, they crippled them right off the bat. We were never able to fully address any of the uh, possibilities or confounding factors that the drug may have in fact had on the soldiers and on their performance and behavior, erratic behavior, while on tour. Someone would have had to have been held accountable and governments don't like doing that, especially with these, the enormity of the incident and the fallout after the Somali inquiry. The 1993 murder of Shadane Arone sparked an outcry across the country. The Canadian Airborne Regiment was disbanded in disgrace, and a public inquiry was held to examine the failed Somalia mission. But most of the blame would be directed at Kyle Brown and Clayton Matchy. I just couldn't breathe. Mm -hmm. There was no privacy. And our, and our family got the shame, you know. You, had, you got all the shame, you got that. You know, it was just a horrific thing that painted Clayton, this notorious murder of a young teen. Like, that's not someone I'd ever known. Machi was later deemed unfit to stand trial after an apparent suicide attempt left him with permanent brain damage. Kyle Brown was convicted of manslaughter and sentenced to five years in prison. As for the inquiry, most of the senior commanders in charge were never held accountable, and the hearings were terminated before the issue of mefloquine could even be addressed. They knew that there was issues with the drug, and they knew that the government would have had to have been held accountable for the Somalia incident. But for veterans like Dave Bona, the war was still far from over. Even after returning home to Canada, he was still experiencing long-term side effects associated with mefloquine. There you go. Fourteen years of military service. And that's it. I don't even know why I'm sitting here. Let's put it that way. I was so suicidal, so depressed, so... You know, that combined with all the flashbacks and the visual imagery and, you know, divorce and uh, court martial, you know, everything all being piled up on top of that at once, you know. I could just, I, I honestly don't know how I, why I'm still alive. Actually, I do know why. It's just every time I went to kill myself, someone, someone stepped in. Bona went misdiagnosed for years, told he was only suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. And while some of the treatments he received did help, they weren't addressing his underlying condition. You know, I tried somatic experiencing, emotional freedom technique, uh, EMDR, like all these, the list goes on and on and on, and nothing I tried was making a difference. So for the first couple of months, we didn't even have tans. Really? It's a story that John Dow knows all too well. After leaving the military, he co-founded the International Mefloquine Veterans Alliance, a support group geared towards helping veterans still suffering from mefloquine toxicity. As of yet in Canada, no one is providing the diagnosis for mefloquine. So I'm in the, that largest group that uh, has the PTSD and might also have the mefloquine, uh, but I cannot receive the diagnosis because it's not been acknowledged with Veterans Affairs, therefore I cannot receive treatment to investigate the issue. For years following the Somalia mission, the federal government has refused to address the severe side effects of mefloquine. And while there have been numerous studies linking the drug to permanent brain damage, the Canadian military continues to maintain the risk of adverse reaction is low. We believe that it's almost like an insurance company mentality 
in that they're concerned about their loss ratio, uh, to put it another way, a payout ratio, so that such a high number of uh, troops that did receive the drug would in fact be seeking additional compensation and benefits uh, to address uh, their intoxication from the use of the drug. And he's not alone. Dr. Remington Nevin is a leading expert on the neuropsychiatric side effects associated with mefloquine. As a former U.S. Army major, he witnessed the impact the drug had on soldiers firsthand and takes serious issue with how it was administered to Canadian forces in Somalia. The trial was, was frankly illegal. Uh, there was fraud. Uh, committed by someone. We don't know who, but there was certainly fraud committed somewhere within the Department of National Defense or within Health Canada in order to justify uh, the shipment of so many doses of this medication uh, under the guise of a drug safety study that uh, at the time required careful monitoring, which uh, the Department of National Defense clearly had no intention uh, of conducting. It's a shocking allegation that Nevin believes is emblematic of the entire Somalia mission. He has no doubt that mefloquine was the driving factor behind the death of Shadena Roan and has serious concerns with its continued use in the Canadian military today. The mefloquine explains everything. Clayton Matchy was psychotic and his psychosis explains perfectly uh, the beating death of Shadane Aron. And he wasn't the only one. There were many others within his unit that were suffering the behavioral uh, effects of this drug. This is very obvious in retrospect, and it's only because of the efforts of uh, some senior members of the Canadian Armed Forces uh, and the Department of National Defense staff to try to deny this, that it's taken so long uh, for this very clear fact uh, to be more widely appreciated. It's a denial that has persisted for the last 24 years. Since the Somalia mission, mefloquine has been the first line antimalarial prescribed to Canadian soldiers and civilians overseas. And while several allied countries like Germany, Britain, Australia and the US have deemed it a drug of last resort or banned it completely, it was only last year that Health Canada first acknowledged that symptoms like psychotic behavior and suicide may persist for years after use. Get rid of this harmful drug. Yeah, yeah. Honorable Minister of National Defense. Being a Canadian Armed Forces member extremely seriously. Uh, we make every effort to protect our members from disease uh, through immunization and other preventative measures. Uh, at the request of the, uh, the Chief of Defense Staff, the Surgeon General is now looking into the use of meth methylquine and will report back imminently. But is that enough? Since methylquine was first prescribed to soldiers over 20 years ago, the drug has been linked to a number of unexplained deaths, murders, and suicides of service members around the world. Here in Canada, it's estimated that between 1995 and 2015, over 230 members of the Canadian Armed Forces have committed suicide. And while all those cases can't be directly tied to mefloquine, suicide remains one of the known side effects. I think that uh, because of the fear of what will be discovered, the uncomfortable conversations that will be had, uh, by admitting uh, formally that this drug is uh, dangerous. I think that's why people are afraid to act. But uh, you know, the problem is not going to get better by ignoring it. Uh, the veterans who are suffering in Canada are not going away. And with every passing year, we learn more and more uh, about the dangers of this drug. So I think the sooner Canada acts to reopen this investigation and relook at uh, some of its mistakes, uh, the better. And time is of the essence. While the federal government recently stated that the decision to take mefloquine now rests with the soldiers themselves, the drug is still one of the three first-line antimalarials that will be used when Canadian forces deploy to Africa on an upcoming peacekeeping mission. They're going to be peacekeeping, meaning that their rules of engagement will be even tighter constricted. This leaves them in a more vulnerable position. And with the addition or the continuation of giving them mefloquine as well, it's your setting that next tour up for a real possible fiasco, much like what we saw in, in Africa back in 1993.
Dow is convinced that until the truth behind that ill-fated mission is brought to light, soldiers and veterans still suffering from mephloquine toxicity will continue to go misdiagnosed and mistreated. It's a grim prospect that Dave Bona no longer has to worry about. When I finally got that diagnosis that said I had an acquired brain in injury from the mephloquine toxicity, you know, it was just like, <sighs> okay. And then from that moment on, you know, you just reorient, reorientate and you refocus and you move on. Bona doesn't believe that he will ever truly be healed from the lasting effects of mefloquine. And while he has been able to manage some of his symptoms through treatments like neural therapy, he is still haunted by the Somalia mission unable to forgive the way his fellow soldiers were treated after returning home. If I was in Clayton's shoes in the state I was in, could it have been me? And <laughs> I'm sad to say it could have been me. It's a sobering thought that Marge Matchy has heard from a number of veterans who took part in the Somalia mission. Former soldiers like her husband Clayton who were ordered into madness and came home disgraced in the eyes of the country. Our family faced the brunt of this for 24 years. It's painful and it's as raw today as it was then. And until there's closure and they right this wrong, it's not ever going to be better. And for Clayton, he paid the ultimate price. And for anything he ever did wrong, he paid an ultimate price. I know that boy lost his life and so did Clayton. Next week on APTN Investigates, in Justice Denied, Kathleen Martins looks into day school survivors who say that a major sports official abused them while he was a teacher in the 1970s. Police quash the complaints, but the survivors say they will never forget. I knew the face, like, oh my gosh, that's him.